Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome to the 52nd episode of the Sira stories from the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So let's go back in time. In the last episode, we covered the expedition of Banu al-Mustaliq. Moving on in our journey, today we will study how the marriage of another wonderful woman, Juwaira radiyallahu anha, took place with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This marriage is somehow connected to the incident of Banu al-Mustaliq. Juwaira bint al-Harith radiyallahu anha was born with a high status. She was the daughter of the chief of Banu al-Mustaliq. When the Muslims defeated the tribe of Banu al-Mustaliq, it drastically changed the life of Juwaira radiyallahu anha. She was taken as a prisoner of war by the Muslims and given as a slave to an Ansari named Thabit ibn Qais. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him. This was unacceptable for a princess of a tribe. So she approached Thabit ibn Qais to negotiate for her freedom. This is something that is uniquely Islamic. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran regards to this, that if any of the slaves in your possession desire to be freed, make it possible for them if you find goodness in them. So Thabit radiallahu an agreed to free her by taking a ransom. But the problem was that Juwaira radiallahu anha was a penniless slave at that moment. Thus, she insisted on seeing the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the only man she knew who could help her. She was then taken to the Prophet while he was with Aisha radiallahu anha. Juwaira radiallahu anha introduced herself and said to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "I am the daughter of the chief of my tribe, and you have seen what has happened to me." I have arranged to free myself from Thabit, so help me in this matter. After she had finished speaking, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam thought for a moment and then said, "Shall I tell you what would be better than this?" And then guess what? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam then asked Juwaira to marry him, and she immediately accepted. Her freedom was set as her dowry. In Islam, Dowry is a gift that the husband gives to the wife at the time of marriage. Although Juwaira was from a very noble lineage, the wisdom of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam behind this marriage was to save her and all her tribe from a dishonorable fate. By marrying Juwaira, the tribe of Banu Mustaliq would be able to enter Islam with honor and the humiliation of their recent defeat removed. so that it would no longer be felt necessary by them to embark on a war or revenge that would have continued until one of the two parties had been defeated so now the news spread among the ansar that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had married juwaira so they said how can we have the in-laws of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as our slaves so one by one they began freeing every single captive until all of them were freed down to the last person al harith the father of juwaira came to medina to negotiate a ransom for his people he didn't know all of what's going on he had run away during the expedition so he asked for his daughter back then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam replied to him it's her decision she can go back if she wants Juwaira radiyallahu anha willingly chose the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam over her own father. She decided to remain with her husband. When Al Harith saw his own daughter eagerly choose the messenger of Allah over him, this affected him and he also embraced Islam. It is so influential that people usually follow the religion of their chief. This is what happened with the tribe of Banu al-Mustaliq. The whole tribe embraced Islam as their chief reverted. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam made Al-Harith the leader of his tribe again and gave him back all of the wealth, the sheep, the goats and the camels. So the entire tribe returned back to its status 
except that they were Muslims now. Can you believe the beauty of the story? And this shows us the real meaning of what jihad is in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not for the war booty. It's not for wealth. Nor it's for power. Nobody forced them. They simply saw the beauty and the reality of Islam. And so they embraced it. And they were allowed to go back exactly as they were with the added beauty of Islam. And Aisha May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with her, stated that, I don't know of any lady who brought more blessings to her tribe than Joeria bint al-Harith, that her one decision to marry the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam altered everything. Joeria, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with her, was known for her piety, fasting and generosity. Once the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went to pray Fajr from Juveria's house and left her in the state of praying. She was busy in doing Zikr Askar, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he returned later in the day, he found her at the same spot. So he asked her, Have you remained in the same place since Fajr? And she replied, Yes. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to her, Should I not tell you of a Zikr and if you do it, it will give you all of the reward for what you did today. And he taught her a beautiful zikr. The reward of sitting and doing zikr for four, five or six hours could be achieved in this simple phrase. If we would say it properly with iman and sincerity. And that is, Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi عدد خلقه ورضا نفسه وزنة عرشه ومداد كلماته It means glory and praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as the number of his creation as much as what pleases him and as much as the weight of his throne and as much as the ink of his words So moving on the marriage to Juveria clearly shows us the wisdom of the multiple marriages of the Prophet ﷺ. Her lineage and status were not the only inspiring characteristics in this marriage, but her strength of knowing her worth made it blissful for her whole tribe as well. She spoke her mind, stood up for herself, and above all, she was deeply committed in her worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, here I like to cover another side of the story. It's the concept of slavery in Islam, which is very different to the black slavery. When the world was practicing a cruel system of slavery, Islam humanized it and introduced a perfect system. It is important to note that the source of slavery in Islam is war. The prisoners of war that are not ransomed off. Our Prophet ﷺ said, The worst of mankind is a person who caught a free man and sold him as a slave. So there is only one source of slavery in Islamic law, and that is captives or prisoners of war who are not ransomed. Because realistically speaking, what are you going to do with them? Are you going to put them in prison? Who is going to feed them? So the solution is to get them involved in the society or make them part of the society. And by doing that, each one is taken care of, is fed, is given shelter, and eventually they all willingly embrace Islam and are freed. This is what happened in the case of Juveria and the tribe of Al-Mustaliq. Historically speaking, many of these slaves eventually founded their own dynasties. The most famous example is the Mamluks. They were called Mamluks because they were slaves. Thus, Islam encouraged the freeing of slaves. So many penalties deal with freeing a slave. Example, if one breaks his oath, he has to free a slave. Similarly, if one breaks his fast intentionally, he has to free a slave, etc. So today we learned different aspects of this marriage, which significantly affected many lives. Juveria, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with her, was a pillar of strength and devotion. And we can all look to as an example. She lived a relatively long life. 
She died at the age of around 65 in the 50th year of the Hijrah, and she shared six years of companionship with the Prophet ﷺ. With this, we come to the end of today's episode. Please don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, Jazakallahu Khair and Assalamu Alaikum. Oh. Uh-huh.